This video is sponsored by Gate.io. If you set an account up using the link in the description, you'll get 25% back on all your spot and futures fees for life. Gate.io. Hello everybody, we're going to think forward now in time to uh, about inflation and what's going to happen you know, leading into, I suppose, the rest of this year into next year. So we're looking at a, a site here called Trueflation. We're going to look at a few other things. And Trueflation is, in a, like I suppose, an independently you know, number crunched CPI data. So, it, you know, it does reflect different figures. The US government reported rate is uh, of inflation is 3.2 and we're currently looking at a 2.6 or 2.67 to be exact. Um, for the US. We're not going to look at the UK because I'll be throwing up, I'll be vomiting all over my keyboard and my mic, so I don't want to do that. And also, we're not particularly bothered about that because it's the US market, which is effectively the most important one. Well, whatever's going on with the dollar goes on with gold, goes on with oil, stocks, obviously, and our beloved crypto. It's all pegged against dollars. So the dollar is king. That's what we want to focus on. So as we can see here, you know, going back a year, we were sitting around eight or well, nine to ten percent um, inflation, pretty high. And over the course of the last year, it's gradually, 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 gradually coming down. And this is something that I was trying to point out to people. I suppose about six months ago saying with this current direction and um, looking at a few other things like um, food and fuel mostly based around oil prices then we can assume that in about 18 months so it gives us another six months or so we can assume make an assumption that inflation will be more or less under control uh, and uh, and then shortly after that all this CPI business, CPI, Fed, blah, 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 rate hacks and all this lot, it'll just be old news. And it won't be something that the markets are particularly bothered about. And I don't know about you, but I've noticed that uh, it's actually not really anything that the market is bothered about at the moment. If we can think about what's been going on in the last six months, it's roughly around the same time I made the video, the markets have been kind of tearing it up haven't they really yeah this is one of the reasons i was thinking well we can mark off a potential low on the s&p look around september what was going on around last september what was the inflation read uh, september to october pretty high from what i recall but the downtrend had been continuing and continuing and continuing uh, uh, into where we are right now so we think about markets as forward thinking right don't we uh, yeah the markets effectively tell us what the future is likely to be the futures markets after all so you know we marked off a potential low here uh, and then when we finally broke out of our trend and we came down to retest it we more or less confirmed the low and uh, and since then we've been having a great time so really you know definitely for the last year it's been a pretty good year uh, and markets have been going up while inflation has been going down now you know Inflation is still high and rate hikes are still existing. You know, rate hikes have been going on for the most part of this year, but the markets have not you know, have ignored it. And why is that, do you think? Because they're forward thinking. Yeah, you know, they priced in this. Yeah, you know, they looked at this one chart, oversimplified, obviously. But they looked at this one chart and gone, well, it's going down. And at some point in the next couple of years, rate hikes will be a thing of the past. And maybe we'll even see some uh, lowering of rates, you know, to uh, further stimulate the economy. Who knows what the Fed are going to do? But uh, yeah, what are we sitting at now? you know, rate hikes, you know, 5%, 5.5%. Five it's still quite low. You know, it's achievable for those with money to uh, to borrow with that. That's not a big deal. It's still historically quite low. Uh, but, um, but yeah, you know, somewhere down the line, maybe a year from now, we can probably assume, not comfortably, but make the assumption that the inflation will be under control and it'll be at 2% and maybe even lower. And that's, an, in, a, in a lot of ways what um the, the the central banks not afraid of but uh, are wary of they don't want uh, inflation to be negative figures you know that's that's almost as bad that's almost as bad as inflation so that means that they would likely lower rates to roughly keep inflation at two percent which is the ideal amount that's the perfect amount of inflation two percent year on year Right, so we can see, according to Trueflation, uh, we uh, we hit almost the 2% low around here. So 2% Trueflation around, the, oh, it's only a couple of weeks ago really now. And then we bounced up. Now my reasoning for that is what I've been talking about on the channel, which is our fear that oil is going to break out from here. So oil over the last, well, the last month or so, but certainly since it reclaimed these, uh, these zones over here, 
has actually gone on to reach the top of this channel here, the top of this area, this $83 a barrel. And if we were to break out from there, that will filter through to the uh, to inflation and CPI will go up again. Now that might be enough to spook markets in the short term, but if you go on what I've been saying, you know, thinking about the general the general trend, right, of of um, inflation uh, and the way it's going down and the way that it's likely to achieve its um, its goal of 2% within the next 6 to 12 months, then really all these little blips and all these little bubbles that we see, you know, on a, you know, I suppose, like I say, when the CPI comes out and everybody flaps and panics, they go, oh my God, CPI is going up, inflation is going up again. Ah, oh, we're doomed. But really, all we need to think about is what's going on with the price of oil. And at the moment, oil, although it being high, it's it's not above 83. But getting above 83, you might see a sustained move up to around 93. And, you know, we'll see where we go from there. And that will cause inflation to go up. Uh, this is the most important component to inflation as far as I'm concerned. Uh, oil is the most important. Because if we go down, and again, you know, just without looking at all of this, but food and fuel and anything basically all takes oil, right? Oil powers cars, trucks, mining equipment, factories, the lot all takes oil. And so we see an increase in oil prices that gets priced into anything that those manufacturers produce or transport, right? So food and fuel is the main components to inflation for you and me. You know, we have to drive, we have to eat, we basically suck up the price of oil. If oil goes up, then we, it's our problem, right? It's, it's, you, we have to just take it on the chin. And as you can see, uh, this basically shows the oil price going up gasoline or as we call it petrol or diesel but yeah gasoline prices going up and continuing to go up and look that has caused this little blip basically in the overall true inflation amount if we look at all other aspects of inflation for the most part they're down utilities down health down house daily items up a little bit and it would be wouldn't it because if you think about the manufacturing costs and uh, delivery costs that's oil um, alcohol, tobacco, clothing, a tiny bit up, but mostly down. Communications, so it's spiked, but it's coming down. Education, going up a little bit. Okay, fair enough. Uh, recreation, culture, going down. Yeah, food and beverages will be going up as well. So what we're seeing is a little blip, which is the oil prices. But other than that, we're seeing a giant downtrend, which is likely to remain going down until we hit our 2% target. And I think maybe even a little lower, which is going to force the lowering of rates and so with that in mind you know what we should be thinking about when it comes to any dip that comes along the line and if you're thinking investment really you know buying stocks adding to your pension all this sort of stuff i know michael berry is shorting the market and i can understand why you might be doing that um because of the uh, the raising of rates uh, sorry the uh, the rising uh, oil prices uh, which would likely see peaks in the short term on something like the s p we're not thinking 2008. I think this is what people are worried about when they hear about Michael Berry or uh, Burry. And what he's doing is that they think, all right, well, he did you know, forecast the 2008 financial collapse. And so maybe that's what he's doing now. It's, I don't think that's what he's doing now. I think what he's doing now is navigating a potential uh, temporary top uh, before a consolidation in markets. Uh, and it's not going to move down into a, a lower low on the S&P. It's, it's very, very unlikely that we'll see something like that. The only reason we'll come down to this level or lower is through some form of black swan event, which cannot be charted. Uh, what we might be looking at here on the S&P is a peak for a consolidation that probably gets picked up around 4,000, to be honest with you. Uh, and that is a decent short. If, uh, if you caught the, the, the bottom on something like that. So you caught the top on something like that. That's, that's fine to do that. That's trading and, and it's, it's nothing more than that. So we're not looking for chaotic, catastrophic collapse in prices. We might just be looking at a bit more of a consistent pullback and downtrend in the S&P and NASDAQ over you know the midterm before basically getting picked up and continue, continuing on with its uptrend, which is in line with the way that inflation looks like it wants to find its way back down to 2% and, and like I say, possibly lower. If we do get lower than 2%, they will lower some rates because they want it to, to be at 2%. Inflation at 2% is actually surprisingly healthy, right? They, that's what they want. Uh, they want it for a variety of reasons, but that's what they want. And they, everybody wants that. They don't want inflation at 0%. They certainly don't want it at negative percent. They want it at around 2 and maybe even 3 So it is what it is. So don't be too afraid of Berry. Don't be too afraid of overall markets. If you're investing, if you're you know, dollar cost averaging, now is as good a time as any 
to, to be doing that as it was six months ago. I might not feel like that for altcoins, but for the most part, you know, over the last six months or so, dollar cost averaging has been a great opportunity. And, you know, we might not feel instantly gratified at the moment, but you will later on down the line and you still will now, even at these levels. Like I say, Berry has, has, has potentially caught a top uh, on this market, but it's not the top. It's just a, uh, it's been a six month uptrend on the S&P, more than that now. And all good things come to an end and they consolidate and they find a new higher low and then they move back up again just as you know inflation is continuing to go down until it reaches the destination. Anyway, I'm going to leave with you there. Hopefully that has been in some way useful just to put things into perspective because sometimes we can get too um, caught up in the day to day and, you know, the CPI and, and um, uh, FOMC meetings can just, you know, they, they, you know they, can, they can just real throw a spanner in the works and everybody gets too over emotional. When in doubt, zoom out as we did six months ago to navigate the low on the S&P. Uh, continue to zoom out again and we can see that basically things are all actually completely fine. And there are only a few things to really focus on and that is the, f the, the price of oil is, is the main driver. We can see an increase in inflation if we break above 83 and we see a sustained rally on oil but until we see that you know, there's nothing to say that we should panic too much over the long term. The short term, that's fine. You know, panic if you want, but long term seems perfectly fine. Anyway, I'll leave with you there. Hopefully that's useful. Thanks for watching. Take it easy.